Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to restore an antique hardwood floor to its original glory. And as usual, I'll talk about some of the mistakes I made, what I do differently, and show you the results, which are, uh, not bad. I know you didn't come here to watch me scrape junk off my floor for three days, although that is what I did. No, the point is that before we can get to sanding and sealing and all the fun stuff that makes the floor look amazing, you want to get anything that isn't hardwood floor off of your hardwood floor. In my case, I had three different layers of floor plus some horrific adhesive and I had to scrape every last molecule of this stuff off. It was not fun at all. If you are unlucky like I was and have this junk all over your floor, I made a separate video on how I removed it. The only thing I'll mention before moving on is if you have anything like this, I would test it for asbestos first. The goal of the sanding step is to remove all of the dents and scratches and stains and imperfections that accumulate over years and decades of wear and tear. Doing this step thoroughly and right is critical to ensure the floor will later accept the seal and finish coats. If this is your first time sanding a floor, you've never seen this much sawdust in your entire life. Spend a few minutes putting painter's tape over anything you don't want sawdust wedged inside of and find yourself a good mask. Because I'm refinishing a 150 square foot third floor guest bedroom with a narrow staircase, I opted to use a single orbital sander. If you have a big area or need absolute perfection, then go get a drum sander. I found this sander pretty easy to use and easy to get going. Uh, I started with 20 grit sanding discs and then moved to 36, 60, and finished at 100. You can go to 120 or higher if you want, but it's diminishing returns once you reach triple digits. I found this orbital sander really easy to set up and get going. Other people will say that you have to use a drum sander, and given that this is a bad homeowner project, I'll let you judge for yourself the results at the end of the video. Almost forgot about this. Yeah, so I guess this part is technically optional, but I opted to remove all of the trim in this room to get that extra, you know, half inch or so. And then I get after it with this sander. Operating this thing is a lot like pushing around a really heavy shopping cart with that one crazy wheel. Kind of has a mind of its own, but not too tough to deal with once you get used to it. Okay, throw back to the previous step. If you had adhesive or mastic on your floor to begin with, this is why it's very important to make sure you remove all of it. Luckily, I had some extra sandpaper anyway, so I kept swapping them out to keep things moving. And I use my shop vac pretty frequently, both in between sanding disc changes and just periodically to keep as much sawdust off the floor as possible. So for me, with an orbital sander in a 150 square foot room, this step clocked in at 5 hours and 45 minutes. Okay, the main part of the floor looks pretty good, feels pretty good. Now I need to go around the edges with an edge sander. Besides being a pretty good core workout, using this thing isn't too difficult either. The main thing again is to make sure that the sanding discs aren't getting clogged, you're not collecting stuff in there, and that you're sanding as evenly as possible using the correct grit. I managed to make just about every DIY mistake you can make when sanding a floor, and one of those was not using the correct grit on the edge sander all the time. This doesn't produce catastrophic results, but it is noticeable later. So the kind of cool thing here is that you could actually sand the entire floor with this little thing. I mean, don't, but, you know, don't, but you could. This edge sander powers a seven inch round wheel, which is great for edges, but doesn't 
do corners that well. Luckily, I, I think I have a solution for that. Uh, yet again, I am bitten in the ass by a supposed universal kit that doesn't fit the thing I have. Alright, got my thing, that was pretty easy. Uh, I didn't realize they had those lockers in there. That was makes it a lot better than standing in line. Okay, anyway, the whole point here is that there's this really cool sanding attachment if you have a multi-tool that'll help you get into these corners where a normal orbital sander or the edge sander can't fit. Sanding was the most difficult and messiest part of this project by far, but if you can make it past this, I would say you're home free. The floor is stripped of all that old gunk. It's sanded down. Now it's time to make it look good. Now before I break out the stain and start staining the floor, I need to make one last attempt to get every single particle of dirt and dust off the floor. So I go once over one more time with the shop vac and I use this tack cloth to grab onto anything that is still on the floor. Brush is a little too big. I would have gotten a smaller one if I had to do this over. So maybe you can tell, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but that's the beauty of DIY projects like this. You can have no idea what you're doing and do it anyway. Because doing stuff that you don't know how to do is the only way to learn how to do them. Now I start with the stain around the edges of the room and then move to the middle. But long story short, don't take wood staining advice from me, but I'll show you what I did anyway, show you the results I got, and you can decide for yourself. By the way, for the staining, I used this thing called a lamb's wool applicator. It just screws onto the end of a pole that you can normally screw things like brooms or paint rollers to the end of. So I would say not bad so far. Of the four stages, staining was the fastest. Just took me one quart to do with 150 square feet of this room, let it dry for a couple hours. Now before I put the seal coat on, I want to take some 220 grit sandpaper and just do a light sand over top. And once again, shop back to remove everything I possibly can before moving on to the next and final stage of this project. So I apply two coats of the Bona Clear Seal approximately according to the instructions. I got it close enough to where it looks pretty good and I try to take long sweeping strokes with the roller and trying to avoid stepping in areas that I've already painted. I can't guarantee this will be the case for your project, but in my case, I found that any remaining things that I didn't like about my staining job were pretty much corrected by the seal coat. Okay, after the clear seal, it's time for the finish coat. This is what gives the floor its durability and the traction under your feet. Once again, and for the last time, I sand and vacuum the floor. This is the finish coat. You'll notice I switched uh, painting directions. Uh, I found it was easier to do it this way, or, well, easier to get out of the room uh, when I'm done, but no functional difference as far as I can tell. The instructions on the bottle say pour out a little dollop of this stuff and spread it out using a paint roller. That's what I do, and uh, hard to argue with the results. This turns out fine, this method isn't too difficult, and it's pretty foolproof, or even bad homeowner proof. To keep dirt off the floor, sometimes you'll see people wearing these little plastic shoes that look like shower caps for your feet. I just opted for socks. I rolled on two finish coats. Each one took about five minutes, and I waited an hour for the first one to dry before putting on the second one. And right, floor is all wet for the last time. This is the second finish coat. Uh, oh, another thing I want to point out, see all these little white spots? Those are just little low spots left over from uh, an imperfect sanding job. Um, but those will clear up as this finish dries. Go 
if you remember from earlier in the video, I opted to remove the trim around the edge of the room. Well, because I removed so many layers of floor, the floor is effectively lower than it was. So I went out and got some strips of shoe molding in order to cover up that last remaining gap. And because I still have the same stain I used for the floor, I can make it match and make it look really nice. The nice thing here is the old trim goes on basically the same way it came off. I just remove the old nails out of it and I use a pin nailer to reattach the old trim as well as the shoe molding. 